is to relate the sol solvability of a system of linear equations to the abstraction of vector spaces and of the definition of linear maps. So, and, and relate it to standard calculus, the functions we treat in standard calculus. So, uh, let's look at a system like 3x plus 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 equals 1, 6x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 is 4, and maybe 7x1 plus x2 minus x3 is 5. So this is a system of 3 by 3 linear equations and we can write this in a matrix form as AX equals B. So here the matrix A is going to be 3, 2, 4, 6, 3, 5, and 7, 1, negative 1. This vector X, so of course for the moment we're keeping everything very concrete, is just x1, x2, x3, this is a vector in R3, and the vector b is 1, 4, 5. And the fact that we can write this system here in this form is just a basic consequence of um, the way matrices are multiplied. Remember we go across and then down. So let's let's think about the, the relation of this to normal calculus. Remember that in calculus we tend to look at functions from the real line to the real line. Abstractly you can just maybe write it in this sense, but a little more concretely what we have is typically a function whose domain is the real line let's say and whose codomain is the real line and it's given by some formula Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a quadratic polynomial and we know that here we have the y-axis which, which is really just a copy of the real line and here we have the x-axis which is just another copy of the real line and this is just a geometric way of representing the way in which this function maps this axis here, this copy of the real line onto another copy of the real line, namely this one. Okay, so we understand this. We understand this very well. So let's see what's going on when we, when we look at this, how we can relate it to some type of map. The way to think about it will be that the matrices are the maps when we write them down. So matrices, and this is actually, this can be made very precise, uh, matrices are linear maps When written down. By written down we need to introduce, to make this notion precise, we need to introduce the notion of a basis. Uh, we won't do that here. So, so what, is, what is a linear map? Well to understand the definition of a linear map we need to recall the notion of a vector space, at least briefly. So a vector space has a bunch of properties, but the two primary properties that we need to worry about is, well, first of all, it's a set, set V, that satisfies the following two properties, that if we take U and V to be two elements in the set, then if we add them together, we stay in the set. You can think about this in terms of arrows. If I take an arrow, let's say U, and another arrow, V, and I add them together, which is done by doing this tip to tail thing here, and this is the, the arrow UV. This is also an arrow. If I add two arrows, I get an arrow. So if I add two vectors, I get another vector. And the second one is that if U is in V and lambda is in R, so this is the definition of a real vector space, then this implies that lambda times u 
is also in V. So if I take a vector, a, a vector U, and I scale it, maybe double it, I also get another vector. And so this is the this is roughly the these are the two primary conditions of a vector space. And let's see, we want to find an appropriate uh, condition on a map between vector spaces. So if I have two vector spaces V and W, then I want to consider a pro an appropriate class of maps T from V to W. So I, I don't want to consider any maps. For example, let's say I tried T of X is X squared, like our quadratic example up here. Well, let's give it a go. I try T of U where u is some vector in the vector space. Well, now I need to know what u squared means. Now, if u is real, so u is a real number, then I can make sense of u squared. u squared will be a real number. u squared is a real number, not in R2. And, but if I take a more abstract example of a vector space, in general, I cannot multiply vectors. These two conditions do not tell me how to multiply arbitrary vectors. They tell me how to scale vectors by a scalar, but not just arbitrary vectors. So, so we don't want to consider maps of this form. The appropriate condition will be to consider linear maps. And the definition of a linear map, so a map T from V to W, where V and W are vector spaces, is linear if, well, the first condition is that T of U plus V is T of U plus T of V. Now, let's think about this. Here, inside the parentheses, we have a, an addition of vectors. So this is addition of vectors in V, which makes sense because that's exactly condition one. We can add vectors. That makes sense. And here we have addition of vectors in W. And this also makes sense because W is also a vector space. So this is a good condition. This uses the properties. This, this mimics condition 1 in the definition of a vector space. So this condition here. Now let's consider the same thing for condition 2. We want to mimic that. So we impose a second condition on the linear map. That is that T, so this is for all U, V in the vector space. Now here we want to consider T of lambda V is lambda T of V. So this is for all lambda on the real line and for all V in the vector space. Again, let's check that this actually makes sense. Here we have a scaling in V, so in the vector space V. That makes sense because we're in a vector space and in a vector space we can scale vectors. Here we have a scaling in W, which also makes sense because W is a vector space and W satisfies that condition. So this is going to be the appropriate uh, definition for a linear map. Now I'm going to discuss linear maps in more detail in another tutorial. Uh, but for the moment, let's just see if we can relate this definition to this picture here, th these linear systems. So, what we will have is that, let's say I've got my vector V, let's do this in a different color. So I've got my vector space V and my vector space W. I'm just going to draw them as copies of R2. And the map T here, you can verify that the matrix A above, so the map that sends a vector X to AX is linear. So this is a, an exercise you can do.
be very easy. So we have this, this map here, a linear map. So we take a vector here, say x bar, we apply our map A, our matrix A, and we end up at, at some vector B. Now, in the case we considered earlier, we had a vector x in R3 and another vector B in R3. So here I'm looking at R2, but you can alternatively think of a picture like this. So I've got vectors like this. So these are two copies of R3. This would be the x bar, this would be the b bar, and we have a map. So when we ask to actually solve this system ax bar equals b bar, what are we doing? Well, we we have this b bar fixed, so this vector is fixed to begin with. And the solvability of this system is equivalent to asking whether we can find an x such that when you apply this map a to this vector x you spit out this vector b. So in the more fancy language this is what's called surjectivity. Well, it's related to surjectivity, it's not necessarily surjectivity. Surjectivity is for all B bar in W, there exists an X bar in V such that AX bar equals B bar, but it's related to the. You're asking for the solvability. You're specifying a Y value and you're asking if there exists a corresponding X value. For example, and, and this, this is outside of um, linear algebra, if we look at the X squared example, which we decided earlier was not um, a linear map, so it was outside the scope of what we're going to talk about. Let's say, so here we have f of x equals x squared. Let's specify the y value. Let's say y equals 9. Then the system, well let's, let's call this a of x to really seal it, seal the deal that this is similar to what we're talking about. Then ax equals b, we've specified b, is now ax equals 9. And we're asking for just the solution of this. So a is the same as f, and that's just plus or minus 3. It's exactly the same as what's going on here. We just need to keep track of vectors because we're dealing with multi-dimensional systems of this form. And so when we're solving equations of this form, there's inherent there's a there's inherent geometry here. And this is the geometry we're talking about here. And the appropriate class of maps are linear maps, which are just a special example of the functions that you consider in calculus. In a subsequent tutorial we'll discuss more on the definition of linear maps. I'm yet to provide any real examples of linear maps other than the matrices discussed here, uh, and that's what we'll do in the next tutorial.